So we have seen a septate uterus and also have seen a septate uterus with one half uh, gravid, one of the two. How are we going to see the copper T inside the uterine lumen? This is how it appears, a bright metallic copper T in the lumen of the uterus. And you can see the comet tail and the shadow of the copper T behind. So there you see an ovary with follicles. And this is the vertical limb of the copper T. This is the horizontal limb of the copper T when I see this on cross section. I will show you. So it is coming from above the vertical limb and there you see the horizontal limb of copper tea. This is how it will appear. So the copper tea has got both anterior and posterior, two bright white lines because of the reflection from the copper wire and circling the central plastic material of the copper T. That is seen only in the vertical limb of the copper T. This is how it appears. In this image, we can appreciate the uterus and its center, but here you can see a bright nodule adjacent to the left wall, which is being supplied by a blood vessel from the left wall. This is seen on cross section. This is how it appears a bright, centrally located endometrial polyp. There you see, it is bright, so it is endometrial in origin. And there, from here, we were seeing a vessel entering the polyp on color Doppler. So this is the lumen on both sides, and in the center, you see a bright polypoidal <coughs> endometrial polyp. If we come across a uterus with endometrium and a myoma which is dark gray arising from the posterior wall and pushing itself into the lumen. Here you see. <clears throat> you can also appreciate that the endometrium in this segment of the lumen is compressed by the polypoidal <clears throat> myoma. This is how it appears well demarcated and dark gray. This is a polypoidal myoma. Another one seen on transvaginal ultrasound. You can appreciate the lumen <coughs> and the endometrium pushed away by this black, dark gray polypoidal. You can compare always that endometrium, you can see the endometrial surface, the endometrial tissue is bright and the myoma 
its texture resembles the texture of the surrounding myometrium. So, a polypoidal myoma will resemble the myometrium and an endometrial polyp will resemble the endometrium in brightness, as I have shown you earlier. So, this is how <clears throat> the myoma which is bulging into the lumen will appear. So it finds a way into the, it gets pedunculated and it enters the lumen of the uterus. This can be differentiated from a polypoidal endometrium only by looking at the texture, the brightness of the texture and comparing it with the endometrium. An endometrial polyp will be as bright as this endometrium. And there you see a polypoidal myoma bulging itself into the uterine lumen. We can always use color Doppler ultrasound to determine the side or the wall of the uterus from where this polypoidal myoma or fibroid is arising and bulging into the lumen. <clears throat> so, there you see the feeding vessel. The feeding vessel is arising from the right, uh, right lateral fundal wall. Now, look at this markedly thickened endometrium in a postmenopausal lady, late postmenopause, in which you can appreciate the feeding vessel to the endometrial polyp, uh, this growth, polypoidal growth, bulging into the lumen of the uterus. It has got a vessel with very high flow, high forward flow. <clears throat> there it is. So this is that markedly thickened, bright, centrally located, tumorous endometrium. <clears throat> this, these were a few examples of our basic training program in which we discuss these things in detail on ultrasound, on the patients, and also these videos which we have prepared for you. Now, if we If we look at the gallbladder, <clears throat> you can appreciate the liver, the smooth surface of the liver, the visceral surface of the liver, and behind the liver you can see 
the gallbladder residing in the gallbladder fossa of the liver behind the neck of the gallbladder we can appreciate the right portal vein entering the liver parenchyma this is how we will be able to see the gallbladder through the intercostal spaces how to place the probe we will see that on probe handling techniques in our second session which you will enjoy definitely now we have seen this call bladder and i would like to show you a few images videos rather this is the gallbladder seen through the seventh intercostal space the wall here is out is beautifully outlined the fundus and here you can see a bright polypoidal growth which could be a sludge ball so thick debris or a sludge ball will move if we change the position of the page but let's see if it moves we believe that gallbladder is one of those conveniently seen organs where ultrasound has totally replaced any other imaging modality like x-ray or ct or mr a patient in whom we are asked to see the gallbladder we know that we just have to ask the patient to take a uh, to follow a fasting for 6 to 8 hours and the last meal taken should be fat free milk free and fruit free in this way gallbladder will be seen full of bile and any abnormality inside the lumen of the gallbladder will be picked up easily in this image starting from the epigastrium i'm moving my probe and there you see here in the gallbladder two bright surface stones with jet black shadows
all these individuals, if they are young and healthy, and they develop these stones, the criteria which we follow here is that invariably stones can produce inflammation and sometimes pancreatitis. So if a patient is fit for surgery, gallbladder should be removed, even if the stones are not producing much symptoms. So these are ah, the this is how we see the gallbladder in longitudinal and cross section. Please note that some of our participants, they are requesting for proposition now because these are introductory programs and today's seminar is an introductory. We will show you on on the patients how to visualize properly a gallbladder, its snack, the common bile duct, how to follow the common bile duct. So we will cover basic, advanced, all possible things today, except the interventional. So you just have to wait till our second session when we will be doing this probe handling technique. At this moment, I'm just showing you how these gallstones will appear nicely. So here you see a distended gallbladder, this one, a big one more than 3.5 centimeter is its tummy diameter here. And there you see a stone impacted in the neck here, over here. I'll show you in a moment. This is, you see, the these are the calculi which are impacted in the neck, and that is why this gallbladder is distended. A mucosal gallbladder, which will not contract if you give a routine meal and two cups of milk tea with a lot of milk inside and a routine meal, and two hours after the cup of tea, we do an ultrasound examination. Thus, seeing that this width of the gallbladder is the, this width of the gallbladder reducing or not. If it doesn't, then we are sure that uh, we are sure that this gallbladder is not functioning if the diameter is not reducing by a margin of five millimeter at least. This diameter the width. So in acute cholecystitis, patient present with acute abdomen, we will see gallbladder full of pus. There you see debris particles inside and we, we will invariably find the wall of the gallbladder markedly edematous.
sometimes they these stones are seen along with tumorous thickening there you see a growth which is bulging into there you see a fleshy growth which is bulging into the gallbladder fossa this is in the wall you can see the stone here with shadow and this is a fleshy growth bulging into the liver in the gallbladder fossa so any fleshy gallbladder wall growth will give us the a suspicion of any malignant change unless proved otherwise there you see infiltrating the gallbladder fossa and we can also see this on color doppler blood flow in the fleshy growth there you see again a distended gallbladder with growth in the neck and there you see blood flow in it yeah a lot of it so this is how an infiltrating growth will be seen vascular and growing into the lumen as well as infiltrating the gallbladder fossa of the liver stones in the gallbladder and stones in the bile duct you see the portal vein there is the portal vein and this is a dilated bile duct and here you will be able to see the the stone in a moment in the bile duct colidocolithiasis just see big huge stone with shadows there you see so this is stone in the gallbladder and there you see stone in the bile duct both seen together liver on ultrasound is always convenient because it is lying right adjacent to the chest wall and in the epigastrium right adjacent to the probe to the anterior abdominal wall 
it is adjacent and the probe is lying on top. 